How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today I bring you an update on the case of Amal Albury, the 25-year-old supposedly unarmed black male who was shot and killed allegedly while jogging by one or two white men, the father and son duo of Gregory and Travis McMichael. Now, this story has created all types of tension, hatred, vitriol among conservatives, black conservatives, people in the media, politicians, whatever. Um, but the problem is that people are giving their opinion and their two cents without much fact as fact. OK, I did a video about this when it first came out. And throughout the entire video, I said, this is my opinion. I don't know. Maybe it happened. Maybe it didn't happen. But we got to wait for more facts to come out to give a definitive conclusion on the situation. Now, as of today, we still don't have all the facts. We have many more questions than answers, but we have more facts to give a clearer picture about what's happening. And unfortunately for the victim in the case, Amar Arbery, and those that want to support Omar Arbery and say, run with my all this, that, and the third. Unfortunately for them, the new evidence goes against Omar Arbery and in favor of the shooters. Now, some are going to say, hey, Abe, you're trying to defend the white man. You don't care about black folks, all this, that, and the third. That's silly. I'm all about the law. I have an icebox where my heart used to be when it comes to the law. I don't really care about Travis, Gregory, or Ahmad. I don't know them. I'm just being real. I care about when any innocent victim dies, but I don't care about Amal Arbery specifically. And I don't know if he was innocent because I have information right here and video that I kind of put that into question. First of all, the original story was Amal Arbery, 25 year old unarmed black male, minding his business in a neighborhood jogging, gets run up on by two white guys in a pickup truck because they saw Amal Arbery in the house under construction, trespassing, burglarizing or whatever they're trying to cut him off and then they eventually run up to him have a confrontation and then Amal Arbery winds up getting shot and killed because he was trespassing that was the original story that was presented to us okay and even the part about him going into the house wasn't really always told but that was all we had at that point we did not have any more information, but now we have more video to really explain what's going on. The first video, shout out to King Face. He did a good job narrating this, but the first video is of the alleged jogger, Amar Arbery, walking through a neighborhood. I don't see any jogging going on there. I don't see no power walking. I see him just walking at a regular pace. I could just go into the grocery store, getting a few items, right? So he's walking through the neighborhood and then he kind of pauses in front of this house that's under construction. And by the way, the way that it was told originally was like it was just a frame with no exterior facade and they were building the house. The house appears to be under remodeling, not necessarily being built for the first time because there's a whole exterior facade and whatnot. If you saw the house from the outside, you would not know that it's basically empty on the inside and just has framing but anyway he pauses for a minute before he goes into the house and then he briskly goes into the house it's kind of a run into the house right and then there's video of him inside the house his mom said that is him and speaking of his mom i think she was the one that crafted the whole thing about him jogging and everybody knowing him maybe that's true about him being an avid jogger and everybody knowing him, but he was not jogging that day. That's for sure. You saw the tape where he was just walking casually and then kind of sprints or light sprints into the house. And then he's inside the house, just walking around, looking and seeing what's going on. But anyway, you see him in the house, right? Now there was a rumor about him having on work boots. He didn't have on any work boots. You can see the video clearly. You can see his shoes. Those are not work boots. It's like basic tennis shoes, some drawers or whatever it was, not work boots. Anyway, he's in the house. Now, at this point, either Gregory or Travis call the cops and say, hey, this guy's in the house. He shouldn't be there. He's walking around. And then, like, a few seconds later in the same police call, he's like, oh, that's him right there running down the street. And in the video, that's corroborated. See, he was walking up to the house, right? But then when he leaves, he's running. Not jogging or a brisk walk, not a power walk, but running full speed 
why are you running, sir? You see something in there that scares you? Did you see a camera? What's going on? He ran out the house. All right. So in my mind, if I see that, I'm thinking he's up to no good. He was in the house to begin with, shouldn't have been there. And then he runs out. Why? Wow, what's going on? And also in that same house, there was a guy in there before. Could have been Ahmad. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. But I don't know. Anyway, Ahmad is booking it. At this point, Gregory and Travis have gotten into their truck. One with the shotgun, one with the pistol. And they're trying to confront him. Now, here's where the law steps in. And this is not me, again, trying to cape for the white man. It's about a law. Again, I said, icebox, where my heart used to be. I don't really care about them. I care about the law. In Georgia, you're allowed to, A, follow someone in your car if you think they've done a crime and then call the police. Because when you're following them, you know their location. You can tell the police where they are. The police come, they get them, do whatever they got to do. If they got to arrest them, they arrest them, question them or whatever the case may be, right? So in this case, they're following them and they have their guns. Now they catch up to him and this is where it gets tricky. Ahmad is running from one side of the truck. In the first video I saw, he was coming up from a different side. It was weird. Anyway, he's running from one side of the truck all the way to the other side of the truck. All right. Either Gregory or Travis have the shotgun. Arbery's trying to rush the shotgun away. Now, from what I've read in the report, it might have been a police report or whatever. Ahmad was in a position that he could have pulled the trigger himself. If the father or son's fingers on the trigger and then the mod is kind of like tugging it from the opposite side, facing eye contact with the person with the gun, he could have easily brushed the trigger himself and then shot. I'm not saying that's what I think happened. I'm not trying to give an excuse. I'm saying that's what I've read through documentation. And when you have a jury presented with that documentation and then they're showing the video and they're convinced it could have happened, what's going to be the result? I don't know, but I'll move on. Anyway, we all know that Amal Arbery attacked them first. They may have been wrong for following him, but they may not have been wrong. Because like I said, you can do that in Georgia lawfully. And if the person was seen committing a felony, you can arrest them through citizen's arrest. So in the case of what Amal Arbery did, trespassing is not a felony unless you can prove intent to burglarize vandalize or whatever now with that tape of him inside the home and then him running outside the house and then possibly previous other tapes of him inside that same home you could prove burglary and if the guy that was working on the home the contractor saw him stealing stuff from the site not only in that house but other houses because the guy put cameras in there because he had issues with other houses he was working on and vandals coming in selling copper if they see him in other tapes and they see a similar behavior, then you might be able to prove intent to burglarize. Maybe. Again, don't care about the law. Now, some are going to try to say he needs to get uh, second degree murder, first degree murder, capital, put him on a death, <laughs> death row electric chair. But is there enough there to do that? If you overcharge him, he's going to beat it. It's the same thing that's going on with Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman. You overcharge him and he beat it. If you charge him appropriately, maybe he won't beat it. Manslaughter or something like that may be applicable. If you can convince the jury that Amal Arbery was right to attack the guy with the gun first. Because that happened. Nobody is denying that. That's definitely, that's definitely what happened. You can say that the guy shouldn't have been there. They shouldn't have followed them. Maybe you're right from a moral standpoint, but from a legal standpoint, it doesn't even really matter what your moral standpoint is. All right. And if you got a problem with that, you should talk to those that make the laws, but don't repeal a law that can actually help you. Just like, again, Zimmerman, uh, there was a whole stand your ground thing. People were saying, oh, we got to repeal stand your ground. This is a racist law. Meanwhile, I think one third of Floridians that successfully invoked stand your ground in the trial were black and we're only like 13 percent of the population but 33 percent were able to successfully invoke stand your ground in florida that were black so i mean what's really going on do not cut your nose despite your face but 
I'm gonna get into my opinion about this case. I think the guys might have been a little overzealous, but at the same time, within their right. And Amal Arbery was not a jogger, or if he was a jogger, he was not a jogger that day. He was a walker and a sprinter, walking to where you want to go sprinting inside the house, trying to find something. Maybe you get spooked and sprint outside the house. That's what happened. That's the reality, okay? People are saying, oh, you can't you can't defend the shooters. You got to just be on the Ma Arbery side. And if you don't, you're not black. That doesn't make any sense. That's so silly. I don't care. Like I said, the people involved, I don't know. I have no vested interest in. Just because Ma Arbery is black does not mean I know him or I got to just defend him just because. And the same thing with them because they white. It, it's just a matter of what the law says. And that's it. But the elephant in the room, my humble opinion here is that nobody would care about this case at all if... It were a black on black crime. People say, don't bring up black on black crime, ABL. What does that got to do with this? Everything. Because we have the same thing that happens, the same exact situation. You know, somebody getting shot when they're not supposed to be, people not being brought to justice when you think they should be brought to justice. That's a common occurrence in the black community from blacks killing blacks. Nobody cares about that, though. And you try to bring it up, then you're accused of being all types of Uncle Toms and Coons and self haters. It's just ridiculous. This case should not really be a story. You know, it should only matter to those that loved Ahmad and loved the men that were involved with the shooting. That's it. Their friends, their, their friends and family care, not me. I don't care. I don't know them. I'm talking about it right now because it's a story. It's a news story. And I got to bring out facts and information, but I don't know them. Why should I be concerned about people that I don't know? Like I said, in general, I'm concerned for victims of violence that should not be victims of violence, innocent people, but I don't know them specifically. I don't have a connection with them specifically. So at the end of the day, as I close, my opinion is changing. Yes, I thought that it might get 25 with the L at first, but now I'm seeing more evidence. I'm seeing more facts come out. It's looking like manslaughter, they might just beat the case. GBI is involved because of the public outcry that's why because before there was not a priority to get this case on the list how many cases are like that in georgia where somebody gets killed it's kind of ambiguous maybe you know it's, it's a crime here maybe it's not you know atlanta especially people get shot killed every single day in atlanta black folks other black folks you know is it a big national story do they get a lot of attention a lot of cases don't even really get touched at all you know you got a whole you got you got a clearance board you're trying to get cleared down People are just sitting there languishing for years and nobody really cares. So this case got the GBI attention because of all the media hype around it. That's all. The president spoke on it. The governor spoke on it. And I got to add one last thing here. People are talking about, oh, the president spoke out against it. So did the governor. So did X, Y, and Z, white politician. It don't really matter. What are they going to say? What do you think Rand Paul is going to say when he's asked about this case? In Georgia, it looks kind of bad when you see it on camera. Is he going to say, oh, well, he got what he deserved and he should have got shot? And uh, No, he's not going to say that. He'll say something that's politically safe. You know, my heart goes out to the family. It's a tragedy. We should get some justice. He'll say that. He's not going to say what we say as conservatives on the ground, especially black folks, because he can't. We can, and we're going to be honest. If you're mad at honesty, then that's on you. You got to be able to deal with reality rather than fantasy but i think i'll leave that right there for now and what say you do you think the guys that are involved with the shooting will get a lot of time in the penitentiary will they beat the case if that's your viewpoint let me know why in the comments below do you think amal albury was an innocent guy jogging through a neighborhood and got attacked by these guys for no reason if that's your viewpoint let me know why in the comments below i think the facts are coming in like i said we still don't know all the facts we still don't know who was the guy that was filming. We don't know if Amal Arbery was involved with a burglary before, if the guys that shot him knew him before, like had seen him before in other tapes. I'm hearing about that, but I'm not really hearing it directly. I've not heard from them, the guys that were the shooters directly, any kind of interview or anything like that. So I think that as the days progress, we'll get more information. But what I will say is that People got to stop with the overreaction, talking about, oh, this is a modern day lynching. They want to kill us. Please be for real. This is not even really a thing. The biggest problem in the black community is the black community itself. That's a fact. 
That's the truth. Don't get mad at me. Do something about it. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.